so can you please describe yourself about yourself why you're in germany so okay so my name is osama you know very famous name i am half lebanese half romanian I grew up, I was born in Le Romania, grew up in Lebanon, did my school there, and then I moved to Germany to, to do my first engineering degree. So I have a Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering from Dortmund. After that, I, when I finished, I, I moved to the UK. I have done my teaching qualification and done my master's at UCL. Uh, so I teach mathematics and physics. And then I worked in the UK as a physics teacher. I was head of department for two years. Then I moved to China, where I worked in Wellington International for around two years. Then I moved to Malaysia and to Penang, where I also worked in international school there. And afterward, I moved back to Germany, where I'm working at the moment as a supply teacher and not as a the German standard teacher in the German school system. So I teach physics and mathematics, but in German now. Amazing, oh my God! You have uh, you have been working UK, you have been working in China, Malaysia, and then finally the German as, as a teacher. So the, my question is, um, if you would if you would like to move in any country in the world, why did you choose Germany? Well, when you move a lot and then you see how other countries are, you realize that yes, Germany has <laughs> sorry has a lot of problems, but it's still one of the best countries to work in and live in. Yes, there are other countries which have much more, let's say, a beautiful landscape or, let's say, more accepting people. But Germany is still, considering all its negative side, one of the best countries to work in and to live in. And that's why I came back to Germany. So, uh, but the, the thing is, uh, as you worked head of department in the UK, which, which is one of the most uh, renowned, com renowned country in the world, and so if i ask you if you uh, compare uk and germany i think most of the uh, the things that they, they give to the citizens are same so can you be no, more specific actually yeah. um from a social background <laughs> sorry uh, social security background germany offers way more there's more security for a job here there are more laws to protect the workers in germany uh, Germany has a better working system in general. So the UK, unfortunately for me, after Brexit went incredibly down. Uh, the hostility towards foreigners in the UK after Brexit increased a lot. Foreigners that used to go to the UK and contribute a lot to the UK economy. And still, I believe it has been some kind of like a backslash. So I feel betrayed by the UK government and the English people for voting for Brexit, considering the amount of the income and the amount of tax generation the foreigners do provide in the UK. And somehow they were blamed for all the troubles that has been created by their own government. So the foreigners were blamed, blamed, and then they are now really working hard to alienate whatever foreigners who can go there. So that's number one. Number two, the UK is a very capitalistic country. So companies have way more power, we have way more rights than the workers. So yes, it is probably better some than many other Asian countries, but compared to Europe, Germany has a much better situation for workers. So when you get your Vertrag or your contract here, you're much more protected. Uh, you have sick days off, you have way more chances well, chances uh, as a worker in Germany to to you know do things. And by the way, like in the UK and Germany, we both pay the same amount, more or less the same amount of taxes. So yes, we do pay a lot of taxes in Germany, but in the UK it's not less, maybe one or two percent less. But in Germany, we get way more for our taxes than you get in the UK. Okay. So you get maybe, you know service from government, stuff from that, and. For example, university is free in Germany. Well, in the UK, you have to pay. If you are a UK resident, uh, you have to pay at the moment twelve thousand four hundred fifty pounds a year. And if you're non-resident, you're paying around thirty thousand pound a year. So for me, free education in Germany that's incredibly good thing to have. You know, for but, the, the few yeah, but you know that uh, Germany is going to uh, implement tuition fees in some universities, for example, TU Munich. 
So, uh, do you know about that they're going to implement tuition fees maybe this year, maybe after next year? Do you know about it? What is your perspective about this topic? Um, it, what, it doesn't matter how much they're going to implement. It's not going to get to 12,000 per year. Okay, that's a good okay. point. So, I like it. Yeah. yeah, so when German implemented... So, I was in Germany when they tried to implement fees decades ago. Yes, I'm old. Uh, I remember the time oh, no. when it was 500 euro in a semester. So 500 euros, which is 200 euros more than what we pay now. But 500 euros is still not anything near the 12,000 pounds yeah, that you would... I agree. UK. So now, even with whatever fees is going to add, it's still going to be incredibly lower than whatever the UK university. Look, unless one of your list it's going to go Oxford, Cambridge, UCL, Imperial, one of those top universities in the world. Then, by all means, the 12,000 euros and uh, pounds a year they're going to pay, they're going to get it back at some point because just having a degree from such university is going to help them in the job market really good. But apart from the top universities, uh, maybe top five, top 10 in the UK, any other university they're going to go to is really worthless. Like I can say that if, for that money, I mean, for that money, it's worth. Maybe if it's like 3,000 a year, 2,000, it's okay, but not for 12,000 a year. And by the way, that's only for UK residents. We're talking about 30,000, 35,000 for foreigners. Yep. Okay, so, so this is number that I feel like it's 30,000 a year. So the question can be maybe um, people like UK because of language. There is no language barrier because we speak English since our childhood. So, so why should people choose uh, Germany and, and, and not they choose the UK? Because UK doesn't have this kind so of problem. Let's like say Germany. economically. I'm going to think economically now. Uh, you come to Germany. You still have to like you before you start. You know, have to do you know a language course. The language course have to be C1 to enter university. So the language course is going to be one year at least. Okay. Um, <laughs> how much are you going to pay for the language course? And then let's say university is free afterwards. Uh, so economically, if I if I yeah, if I have my course in the university, it was free. But uh, if I go to the private schools, then yeah, I have to pay some money. Yeah, you're going to have to pay some money. But yeah. if let's say you what, let's say five hundred euros per course, A one, A two. B1, B2, C1. So that's yes. 2,500 euros for all the language courses that you need. Okay, I think we, euros. I, I mean, don't think I, I yeah, I don't think I need uh, to learn till C2 because uh, as I was studying in English, one. so for me, yeah. Yeah, and we're talking about C1 that it's the minimum that you need to get to get to any, you know, normal German university course at bachelor. But, okay, you're talking about bachelor. Okay, I'm talking about masters. Okay, Obviously, yeah. I'm talking about bachelor here. We're not talking about the masters that are taught in English or something. We're talking about bachelor degrees, so the standard okay. bachelor degree in okay. engineering and anything. Okay, so and then you study here for free afterward. So all what you have been doing, putting together, it's not going to be even near really what you pay in one year in the UK. So yes, you don't do have language in the UK, but then you're paying thirty thousand a year time is three years for a bachelor and maybe two years extra for a master's or one year depends on what the university what course is it doing so we're talking about a huge amount of money which you don't have to pay in germany so germany clearly has the advantage even with the german course well, obviously and number two you're learning a new language so what's bad about that you come you learn it so you now learn your own you know your own language and german and english Instead okay. of just knowing English and a huge debt at the end. So the question can be, um, uh, uh, it's a good point, I guess, that the language barrier in Germany. So my question is, uh, as I'm from Bangladesh, I, I have seen a lot of people, they are afraid to learn new languages in Germany. And they have some, some afraidness. They think that, oh my God, it's, very, it's, it's a difficult language. Maybe I will have some difficulties or maybe I need this, I need that. How how can uh, we motivate those people? What is your experience? Because you already have C2, I guess. Uh, C1, I don't have C2. Sorry, C2 yeah, is yeah. high. Yeah, so C2 becomes... You don't uh, need like C2, I guess. C1 okay. is enough for you. Yeah. C1 is enough to, you know, to study. So how you... Here. 
how you how you yeah how you see these these things how can people overcome these circumstances well it's it's not about overcoming i would say if you have the money if your parents are incredibly rich by all means do go to the uk pay your 30000 a year uh, by the way the 30000 plus the living cost which is incredibly higher than germany okay i haven't added any living cost into it so you're renting you're buying food all of that all of that is much more expensive in the uk so if you're rich by all means go to the uk don't do any german course if you're not rich that rich you have to be incredibly rich to pay that what are your realistic options okay so if you fear to study a new language and come to germany all of that then by all means stay at home if fear is the only thing that's stopping you you're not going to go anywhere so what are you going to come here if you are afraid of the language course and the university course itself is also much harder than the language course it's incomparable so if you're going to go into engineering at university electrical mechanical any type of engineering it's going to be hard like engineering in germany is really hard so if you're afraid of a language course what are you, what have you left for the actual studying in germany uh, and maybe don't leave bangladesh just stay there if you're afraid that's a good point i guess okay so um, as you have learned science so what is the minimum language skill someone should have to work in germany with master degree in english ah wait for if so what i know is that if you have a b2 level a b2 mm -hmm. you can work mm -hmm. in germany because it's not about just a b2 level it's about it's a functional skill so you can talk good enough so you can understand you know your employer customers all of that so that's b2 when i say c1 it's if you want to come to study in germany a german language course like a study in a german in a german language so the engineering course is in german and most bachelor degrees if not 99% of them are in german some master's degree are in english but the majority of bachelor degrees are still in german for that you need c1 you cannot even apply to university okay without the c1 so that's like a prerequisite to apply you can't come here and say okay i will start university and do the course at the same time you know you finish the c1 you pass the c1 you have the official certificate of c1 and with that certificate you send it to university and say i want to study engineering i want to study medicine i want to study x y or z so but if you are coming and you have been accepted with an english language master's degree then yes you can start and you can you know because it's in english so it doesn't matter you don't need that you know good german but what about work so at some point you're going to have to find work and for functional skills as an engineer or a graduate b2 is what's expected from you or that kind of level skills those who do vocational training in germany it's b1 is enough for them so b1 for you mean aus you mean ausbildung right ausbildung so ausbildung is a vocational training in germany which is not a university degree you can <clears throat> it's would be equivalent to a high school technical degree that's mm -hmm. b1 is enough for that okay so then the next question is okay so now we have a standard so for example like me i'm a student that's finished my masters i have b2 so let's talk about uh, how people should make a plan micromanagement plan to do b2 because if you are in germany you have to study you have to work part time and then within that time how people can learn german at least i mean, you said b2 so i say b2 would be maybe difficult during a study period but because you have to manage everything so what how can people do it what is your uh, okay so experience? let's say a master's yeah. degree in germany takes at least two years so two years, some, yeah. okay so you have like minimum two years of master degree uh then obviously let's say two years you need a1 a2 b1 b2 so you have a level and b level so it take if you if you, even if you take like a small course once a week a monday like the volkshochschule in germany they offer this kind of courses they are relatively cheap and uh, once a week it's manageable 
Otherwise, at some point after you finish university, you still have to do all of them at the same, like in, in a very much short amount of time, it's going to be a lot of high pressure. So let's say you do the A1, A2 in your first year at university and you do your B1, B2 at the second year of university. And because you're taking like six months to finish a half level, six months should be more than enough for you to finish a half level. Okay, so it is manageable, right? So that's that's just me. That's just well, me. well, let's say it is essential, manageable, yes, and also essential. Okay, so uh, the next question is: as you're working as a teacher, so uh, you are working in go. I mean, you are allowed to uh, to work as a government school teacher. I mean. I mean, officially, you are a beamter. In German, we said beamter, right? So, no, 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 I'm not. No, I'm not a beamter. I'm not that type of teacher because my teaching qualification is a UK one, and you mm -hmm. cannot. It wouldn't be just qualified one to one to a German one. Okay, yeah, so, so my, I'm working as a supply teacher, and that's mm -hmm. not a beamter. You are a civil servant, and that's a totally different status in the school system here in Germany. Okay, so the question is, for example, someone uh, from third world country. India, Bangladesh, or Pakistan, uh, but the she or he is a teacher for a long time in his country, and now he came to Germany, and he say that she or he wants to be a teacher in Germany, not like you, not Beamter. I mean, just normal teacher. What can be the normal process? How should they move forward? Really hard because it's not an EU qualification. Number one, so technically they wouldn't recognize it even as a teacher. Okay. okay. Um, it is like mm -hmm. that, and they have to. They will tell him, "Well, you have to go back to university, and to become a teacher in Germany, it is seven years of university." So, what do you mean by UK qualifications? Sir? Can you please explain more deeply? Yeah, because when I when I did a UK qualification, even though it was it is Brexit, but they accepted that I am qualified as a teacher, but not to teach uh, to become a beamter in Germany. And that's a totally different thing from someone having a qualification from uh, Asian countries. Because the UK is, I mean, any degree from the UK is accepted way more than any degree from Pakistan, India or Bangladesh. And unfortunately, it's the situation. And if someone's certificate is recognized in Germany, which is an account, so then it's still not possible? Well... <laughs> Here's the question is, are, would they be recognized in the first place? Teaching qualifications are incredibly hard. I mean, I couldn't even get my British one recognized as an equal to a German one. And okay. do you think that if the British one wouldn't be recognized as equal 100%, do you think that uh, any degree from another country that's going mm -hmm. to be even remotely recognized in Germany? They are very, very strict on this kind of things. So if you're a teacher in coming from any other country, the chances that you're going to actually work as a teacher in Germany are incredibly slim. And this is a situation. As an engineer, it's the highest chances you have if you work in IT, engineering, healthcare, you know, this kind of professions. But as a teacher, it's in nearly impossible. It's really nearly impossible. The paperwork is immense. And eventually they will tell you, go back to university and get a German qualification. And that's seven years from your life where you're not producing anything. So you have to pay for everything. So okay, that's so unfortunate. It is. it is what it is. Okay. So uh, is there any course like house building course for school teachers? No, that's school teacher. Okay. It's, it's a very, very high it's it's not it's not just a master. It's more than a master. That's why it's seven ah, years. Okay. There is no ausbildung to become a teacher. There is an ausbildung to become um, like a tzia. What is tzia? At a kindergarten. Ah, so okay. you're yeah, so you're a kindergarten, not a teacher. teacher. So you're just no, you're not a teacher at the kindergarten. So you're a uh, an educator. So let's say the English word would be educator, but you're not a teacher. How much? And you're not money? working. How much you are how paid? Much? If you, how much you are paid if you work as a teacher? I have no idea, but I know for sure it's not going to be much because it's mm -hmm. house building, so it doesn't matter. Their pay is going to be. But it's still, the 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 qualifications is behind, right? To do the house building. 
to start the Ausbildung ist B1, yes. Okay, and, and which institute they accept? From which institute do they need this certificate? Uh, it doesn't matter because uh, the institute is irrelevant because eventually you're going to do the exam, the B1 mm -hmm. or any language exam, at only mm -hmm. two recognized institutions, Goethe and Telk. And for official documents, for anything official in Germany, only these two institutions. So you can study German at any institution, like any private school, whatever, it doesn't matter, online, it doesn't matter. But the exam itself has to be in a qualified center, exam center, that offers the Goethe or the Telk exam. And only these two, because they are official exams, you do them under you know very strict conditions, they will be sent back to Germany, or if you're doing it from the outside, they will be corrected, marked, sent back. So these are the only two accepted um, language certificates. The institute is irrelevant itself. Most important is the exam comes from just two institutions. Okay, just great to know. Thank you. And so I'm going to ask you now about the German economy. For example, uh, as I as I see in newspaper, Germany's economy shrinks 0.3%. Mm -hmm. uh, in this this last year, if we compare 2023-2023, so my question is, uh, where do you see the the, the Germany's economical uh, challenges? I, right now, they are facing a lot of problems. They're facing the problem with house lender, or I mean, the illegal immigrants, the asylum. So yeah. they are uh, they're planning to send them back to their country. And the no, AFD, no, 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 they're not. It's it's one radical party. Who has that AFD. plan? It's going okay, to be very AFD. hard for this party, for the foreseeable future at least, is okay. to actually win like a so, majority in the government so they can like push the foreigners out. Yeah, so the, the thing is, I've seen a lot of information and news that uh, this party, FD party, they are telling that no Auslander. But this kind of information has a double meaning in my country because, because they don't live in Germany. So they think that Germany doesn't like immigrants which is totally wrong so well, yes yeah. it's, it's not about liking immigrants so a similar situation happened in italy so italy also had actually a far-right government that was elected with meloni and they have a lot of rhetoric they want to push all the foreigners out but once someone is in government and they now realize how much the economy depends on having this workforce then Absolutely. they can't do it because they know if they do deport any foreigners. I mean, obviously, it's easy to deport someone who is criminal or someone who is illegal and know nothing. But even if someone who is illegal, but they are like a good working force, they, it's going to be very hard to deport them because they need them. Because once any party becomes in government, they are responsible for the results of their, you know, policies. So if the AfD deported and even tried to deport the, the companies here will have like a huge rebellion against the AfD and say, what are you doing? You're going to ruin our companies because we depend on these workers. Rhetoric in, in, you know, when you're not in government, you can talk whatever you want because you are not in government. You are the opposition party. Once you're in government and you actually have to implement things, it's a totally different thing. Meloni in Italy stopped talking about, you know, deport deporting foreigners. Because once she's in government, I have to have to manage things in reality. She realized that if I depart all these people, the whole economy was going to collapse. So they couldn't do anything. Uh, yeah. So the question is, um, the people who applied for asylum seeking and their applications was rejected recently. So they want to send back those people, not the yes. people living for long. No, no. What? No, no, no. We're talking about anyone with a proper visa, with proper paperwork. Legally, they can't do anything about it. Okay? it's Legally, they cannot do anything about it. If you came here with a visa, if you have a... Well, obviously, if you come here with a visa to study and to work, and you would have you know, an Ausweis, which allows you to live in the country, yeah. they couldn't do that. Sorry to interrupt, but the concern is, so the every party is not against the people who is living in Germany legally. They are against those people who is living illegally, am I right? Well, I would say the AfD party are against anyone who's colored. And if they could push them all out, they would. But the AfD party is one party out of six, seven parties. And in Germany, it's, you know, it's about coalitions. It is very unlikely 
mathematically it's very unlikely that the AFD is going to win. They might win like a few cities here and there, but they cannot win enough to actually govern Germany. Because the system here is not like other countries where one party can rule. Considering German history, they made all these safeguards so the Hitler, Nazi party kind of situation doesn't come again. So there are a lot of safeguards in the German constitution and in the German high court to make sure that even if they do come, which is incredibly unlikely, they can't do most of the things that they talk about. Because again, talking is easy. Being in government is hard. The thing is, uh, uh, the AB party, they are struggling. I mean, the last, in, in three years ago, they are not even considered for, for ruling the, the country or be a part of the ruling. But yes, but they are now entering to the decision making. True. Decision making. True. Uh, people, if you don't, people who don't know German history, I mean, after World War II, there have been many parties, neo Nazi parties, came and disappeared. So I wouldn't be much, I would never, let's say, I would never hinge my future or my future plans to come to Germany or not come to Germany, to study or not to study or to work, not to work in Germany for this kind of half day rhetorics that I hear. That is, I, would, I wouldn't take that into consideration at all. If there is an opportunity, if there is a chance for the person to come to Germany to work here, and they can provide value for society, like they can produce things, they can they not come here and, and, and like, sit the and the yeah. They will, yeah, they will be, uh, they can come to Germany and they will live here in Germany quite well. Okay, perfect. So, uh, last question, I will take, because we have five minutes, then we'll take a break. So, um, you are, how many years are you living in Germany? That's three years now, around three years. So, so I lived in Germany before for, for seven years, decades ago, and then I moved out. I lived across the world, and then I moved back. So three years from the last time I moved. So the, in. the question is that right now the German is facing some some crisis of of, of uh, doing the household. I mean the budget. So uh, how, what, what, how what do you think? How should uh, do they really be become more stronger as previously they were? So what do you think about? I. It? I can't talk about it because I don't have the information and it's more like speculations and it's kind of like what do you speculate for the future uh, even economics and people with PhDs and experts cannot speculate on the future so I would be far from speculation because that's first of all I teach physics and math I do not teach you know budgetary responsibility so I'm not the expert at all to talk about this topic. Okay, so maybe I can add something here. I recently I have uh, I have read some newspaper regarding the skilled worker like us. Very skilled. Yes. I've seen they're making a lot of rules easier for us. For example, uh, from March this year, March that we have so many new rules, which was quite amazing. For example, uh, previously if you uh, apply for your spouse, you have to show a big howl. I mean an adequate space for your wife and children but now this will be eliminated after March mm -hmm. and the biggest change they have bring to the table if you apply for your parents your parents will get resident permit like US or Canada they are the mm -hmm. so this is a massive change they are going to implement after March so that's a good news for us skilled worker in Germany so I, I must okay. say that what is your opinion yeah, it was obviously, well, the Germans wouldn't do that if they didn't need it because they're realizing that they need the workforce. So the AfD talks about pushing people out. The German government knows that they need people in and they're trying to change the laws to actually take more immigrants, skilled immigrants. You know, when we talk about Germany wanting immigrants, they want the working type of immigrants. So people who have knowledge, who can produce because Germany is a country of production. What they don't want are people who come here and, you know, seek asylum and then are burden on the system. So they just uh, want to move, take out from the German system, you know, not give in the German system. That's why. So I wouldn't say that they are so loving towards foreigners. I would say it's a calculated um, movement. Okay, it's a calculated movement. You need workers, you need producers and obviously you're going to you want to have them in and obviously you change the laws so that they can come in easier and more of 
Zem. Are you an IT specialist?